so I will be splitting this up into, tw I was gonna say 25 parts, one book per video, no. everybody, it's your girl Jay and today I am here with my May wrap up for 2021. I read a total of 25 books this month. I will be splitting this up into five parts just because 25 books in one video is a lot and I ramble and therefore the video will be six hours long. So we're doing five books per video instead. So without further ado, let us get started. <sighs> Just to make things easier on myself and my editing, I'm going to talk about the e-arcs that I read first in this video just because I don't have physical copies of them. Yada yada, you guys don't care, you just want to hear about the book. So the first book that I read was Starfish by Lisa Phipps. I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This book follows a young girl named Ellie who is constantly bullied for her weight. It's a story about self-discovery and self-worth and I really liked that. I really liked the depiction of therapy in this. And and the relationship that Ellie had with her therapist. This is a middle grade book so I think that having that positive light on therapy is really important. I really despised Ellie's mom and brother in this. They were just terrible to her. I really like the support system that she had in her friend Kat as well as her father. For pretty much the entire book I just wanted to like reach into the pages and give Ellie a hug because she did not deserve the way people treated her and it was really interesting to read because when you're reading you're kind of like this would never happen like people are not this mean but the author's note actually talks about how the things that happened to Ellie in this book are things that happened to her as a child which is like crazy to think about people actually treating another human like this. But like I said, this is told in verse, which I think was a really good choice because it is very digestible and like I said, it's for young readers. So I think that it has a very important message in a very digestible way. So three out of five stars. I liked this one. The next book I have, I loved so much. It is Tokyo Ever After. This is by Amiko Jean and I gave it a 4.5 out of five stars. This book follows Izumi, who is a Japanese American who has never really felt that she fits in in her community in California. She was raised by her single mother but has always felt very loved by her. She soon gets the news of a lifetime when she discovers that she is the sole daughter to the crown prince of Japan. So Izzy ends up traveling to Japan and gets swept up into the life of royalty and it is very overwhelming and scary. Not to mention that she starts to fall for her brooding moody body garden. It's like the story of that. First off, I just want to point out how much I love this cover. I just think it fits so well with the story. It gives me such Princess Diaries vibes, which was like my entire childhood. So as soon as I saw the cover, I knew I needed to read it. I really liked this cast of characters. Izumi was such a relatable character and I loved how while she was trying to learn more about her Japanese side, she also stayed very true to who she was. I also really liked how quick-witted she was. She definitely had me laugh laughing at some of the things that she was saying. I also really liked Akio. I think that he was a really great character and I loved him right from the beginning. I had no idea that this was an enemies to lovers situation so I was on board right from the very beginning because I am a sucker for that trope. I will say that the love story is a bit like insta love. It was just a bit trope heavy but they were cute like I'm not gonna lie. It just was a bit off in my opinion if that makes like literally any sense at all. I also just think that the story is very relatable like obviously not the whole finding out you're a princess situation, but I'm talking more along the lines of feeling like you don't belong and you never fit in and trying to discover yourself. I think that a lot of people will be able to see themselves in Izumi's journey. I did find Izumi a little bit annoying at times, especially when she literally cried at everything. It just kind of took me out of the story. I listened to this on audiobook and I think that the narrator did a really good job with her voice. So I definitely recommend it if you're looking for something like really cute and quick and fluffy. It was a good time. So 4.5 out of 5 stars. Next up is Spells Trouble. This is by PC and Kristen Cast. They are the authors of the House of Night series, which is a series that I am very nostalgic over, even though they are not good books. I was just really excited to read another one of these authors books to see how their writing has developed since those books and um 
I didn't really like this book. I gave it a 2 out of 5 stars. I was very disappointed. So this follows Twin Witches, Hunter and Mercy Goody. They are the direct descendants of Goodyville, the town that they live in. Their mother, Abigail, is a very well-known witch in the community and she is murdered on the night of their birthday ritual, which would have made them gatekeepers to the Five Realms. As the murders begin to pile up, the two sisters need to work together along with their friends and lovable cat Xena in order to stop the murders before it gets out of hand. So like I said, I was originally very excited for this series just because one, PC and Kirsten cast, and two, witches. I love witch books, so I was just very excited to see where this was gonna go. And like I said, I was disappointed because it was not good. The book actually did start off very strong with the prologue and I was thinking that this was going to be really good, I was really going to love it, and then I just kept reading. And the main characters just got more and more annoying as the story progressed and it's probably because the prologue did not follow the main characters at all. It followed the founder of Goodyville so it was like completely different than what the actual story was. The two main characters were just so self-absorbed and annoying and I just found the writing style to be very juvenile and I wasn't expecting that. I just thought it was going to be more advanced, for lack of a better word, than what it was. I also just really hated the dialogue in this. It was very awkward and stilted throughout the entire thing. Like, nobody talks like that to each other and it just took me out of the story. I will say I really liked Xena, the cat, <laughs> but even Xena annoyed me at times, so it just wasn't my cup of tea. I did end up giving it a two stars instead of the one stars I was going to give it because after thinking about it, the story is very unique and I've never read anything like it. I just think that it could have been executed so much better, so two out of five stars. The next book I have is May the Best Man Win by Z.R. Elor, and I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars as well. So this follows Jeremy Harkis, who is the student body president and cheer captain of his high school. He came out as transgender in his senior year and has decided that he wants to also become homecoming king. The only person standing in his way is his ex-boyfriend and football star of the school, Lucas Rivers, and it's like the story of that. I was initially excited for this because it claims to be an enemies to lovers, second chance romance, which are two of my favorite tropes, with a transgender main character, so I was just excited to read that and um, it just really disappointed me. I had a really hard time with this. I was expecting it to be like a light, fluffy, contemporary rom-com type of situation, and it definitely was not that. The story is told in alternating perspectives between Jeremy and Lucas, and I just really hated Jeremy, like with a fiery passion. I did not like his character at all. He was just such a dick to literally everybody, especially his friends, just because he was insecure about his gender and masculinity. I did understand his anger and frustration surrounding his needing to appear more masculine, but I just found that he adopted a lot of aggression and toxic masculinity and I just got tired of it very quickly. There's just absolutely no character development for him by the end of the story, which I was expecting there to be like some kind of flip, but he just stayed the same pretty much the entire story and I just didn't care by the end of it. Lucas was also not a very likable character either, so it was just very hard to connect with either of them. Lucas is neurodivergent and he's trying to hide it from the entire school. A lot of the story was just him blaming his autism for the situations that he found himself in and it just rubbed me the wrong way. I just think that the entire conflict between Jeremy and Lucas could have been avoided if they had literally one conversation which Lucas spent the entire book trying to have with Jeremy and Jeremy was just like, fuck off, I don't want to talk to you. And I am just not a big fan of the miscommunication trope so this book was just 100% not written for me. I did like some of the side characters, like Soul, who is a non-binary individual, and Naomi, who was Jeremy's best friend, if you want to call it that, which is why I ended up giving it a two stars instead of a one star, because I think that 
those two characters deserve to shine a little bit more and honestly I would read a book about those two characters instead of Jeremy and Lucas because I did enjoy the writing style like the author did a great job with what they were going for I just didn't like the characters so I could not get into the book at all but yeah I gave it a two out of five stars oh there is also a lot of transphobia and homophobia in this book which is like literally the whole point of this book but I definitely think that it needs to be mentioned as a trigger going into it because there's a lot of it so if that's something that is triggering for you then be aware of that going in the final book that I'm going to talk about for part one of this wrap-up is called kiss and repeat it is by Heather Truitt and I gave this a three out of five stars this book follows Stefan Lucky who has syndrome and he believes that this is the reason why he can't get a girl to like him. He attends a party where they play spin the bottle and he discovers that when he is kissing somebody his tics disappear. He decides that he is going to begin a kissing experiment to see if his hypothesis is correct and as this experiment continues on for more time, two girls end up showing interest in him and he starts to realize that maybe his Tourette syndrome isn't the reason that girls aren't liking him and it's like the story of that. I actually haven't read a book with a main character with Tourette syndrome so I was very excited to read this. I thought it was going to be a lot about Tourette syndrome and bringing awareness to it but that definitely was not what this was. I just thought that it was a very average read and the whole premise of the kissing experiment was lost very early in the book so I feel like the synopsis is not exactly accurate to what the book is actually about. I also just wasn't a big fan of the overall relationships in this book. I didn't really care about either of the love interests. If I had to pick one over the other, I would definitely pick Jan over the other one, who I can't even remember the name of, so that's <laughs> probably not a good sign for this book. But I do think that this book would be very enjoyable to young YA readers who are just getting into the genre. Like, it was a very quick and easy read. I just don't think that it was anything revolutionary at this point, so three out of five stars. All right, everybody, so that was my part one of five wrap-ups for the month of May 2021. If you're interested in seeing what else I read this month, then I will leave the other wrap-ups when they're uploaded down below for you to check out. Let me know if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them, and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!